haastattelu ohjelmassamme. Meillä on tänään kunnia ja ilo pitää vieraanamme professori Lennart Mölleriä Tukholmasta. Hän on esittänyt uutta teoriaa siitä, kuinka Israelin eksodus, tämä historiallinen eksodus, että se on kulkenut toista tietä kuin tähän asti on ajateltu ja kuinka sieltä löytyy konkreettista todistusaineistoa siitä. I'm a scientist, I'm a research scientist, I'm a doctor in medicine and professor at the Karolinski Institute in Stockholm. So doing research on the DNA level and the, the combination of DNA and diseases and environment and issues like that. That's what I'm working with. Your specialty is especially DNA. Yes, to see how DNA can be damaged or being affected by the environment or what we eat or how it can be aging, growing older, so to speak, and things like that. Uh, so you mean all its medical aspects? Yes, medical sciences. Mm. Yeah. Well, uh, how long you have been interested in this exodus of Israel? That's, uh, that's a good question too, because it's very hard to say that it was exactly a certain date or so when I started. Uh, I've always been interested in history and in uh, archaeology and so on. But uh, more specific dealing with this and traveling in the Middle East, documenting and doing research uh, is about from 95. So that's some years now. And uh, now you have documented all these finds in this book, mm. which is easily tractable, used in internet and will soon be available also here in Finland. Yes, and uh, the book is made as a court case. That's the reason it's called the Exodus case. So I go through the story of Exodus uh, in 84 chapters, dealing with it as you would do in a court. So I try to have a scientific approach to what the book is about. It's 790 color images, so people can make their own judgment. So you are actually not uh, claiming that you for sure know where the Exodus was, but you bring the evidence so that everyone can look at and make his or her own opinion. Yes. I mean, one thing is uh, it's very hard to prove anything from a, mm -hmm. a legal point of view, so to speak, that happened so long time ago. On the other hand, if you put all the pieces of knowledge and evidence that exist, it will form an image or you will see a structure in it. And that's what the book is about. I especially took note of the long index here and how many references you have. Mm -hmm. and. And so this is well documented and a lot of uh, beautiful photographs of the facts mm. so that everyone can form his own opinion. Yeah, but you, th this is a part of science. I'm a scientist. Yeah. That's my yeah. training. Yeah. So even if I work with these texts from the Bible, I do it from a scientific point of view. Mm. If they said that they were there and moved in that direction and had a campsite there, etc., I go there and I try to follow the pathway. And when I document it, I present it so people can read it and look at it themselves. I mean, that's science. That's how we publish scientific papers. So I'm just following the same pathway. I also noticed here that you are an amateur diver. Yes. Uh, how did you got interested in this sort of hobby? <laughs> uh, I have some uh, normal hobbies or interests or some that are not so normal. Diving is not that strange, but it's, I'd say it's very, very dangerous to dive in this area that we talk about here. That is called the Red Sea uh, or the Gulf of Aqaba. And uh, it's the shark infested Why? waters and toxic fish, strong currents, deep waters, no sharks. sharks. Yeah, it's a lot of things that makes it very complicated and you are under surveillance all the time. You have people looking at you, uh, investigating what you're there for and you have the police, you have, uh, yeah, it's, it's very tough. Have you met many sharks there underwater? 
Uh, no, I won't say that I met many, uh, and uh, that's good. I mean, a shark is not that bad, but uh, they can be very, very aggressive. But so far, I haven't really met them, no. Yeah, but the political situation in the mid Middle East is... Oh, the that's very hot, because the Gulf of Aqaba, uh, Egypt claimed that they have 50% of the Red Sea, or the Gulf claims that they have the other 50%. Still in the middle, people can go up to Eilat in Israel, on international waters. No one knows where the borders are. Everyone is guarding one another. You're not allowed to have a boat there. It's it's very complicated. Yeah, you must have faced many dangers there. Yeah. Yes, and uh, in general, it is. Uh, uh, I mean, the situation in the Middle East is sensitive, mm -hmm. in general. And uh, it's very easy to get into very tricky and complicated situations. And especially when you're in Saudi Arabia, living in a desert with Bedouins. Uh, I guess uh, you haven't published anything about these dangers and difficulties. Uh, the, this is more or less scientific yes. paper where you don't touch these items. But maybe the lis listeners are interested to know <laughs> what this work actually means. Yes. I mean, you're correct in that uh, the book is done in a scientific way to mm -hmm. part by part show things and finds and where they were located and what they could mean and represent. But um, uh, I mean, it's of course the case that I follow the biblical history. And we should note that there is really not any history book in history uh, that is older than the Bible that really tells the history uh, of a region and of a people. So I'm very interested in that from a scientific point of view. But the content of it, of course, involves their relationship with God, their fights with God, and how they leave uh, their faith and how they come back. And uh, I mean, it's a, in a one way a terrible history. It's a history of a people that really leave their God all the time. So uh, that's the reason why a lot of people don't like the Old Testament, mm -hmm. because they misunderstand it. They think we should follow the Old Testament, but we should read it as the history of a people. And that's a different thing. As you are a scientist and you have also your scientific ambitions, but why to risk your life with the sharks or difficult political situations? <laughs> What's your motivation? for this work? Well, uh, I'd say that, uh, well, one thing is I'm a Christian, mm -hmm. but uh, there's a lot of Christians around that don't do things like this, so that's not the... Uh, I'm very, very curious as a scientist, and I look for things, and I develop drugs, uh, medications for different diseases, and I look into things that people haven't looked at before, and I really try to see behind the door, so to speak. And in the same way I do uh, when I read the Bible, and when I read the Bible, I immediately think, oh, I have to be at that location. I have to see what it looks like. Because it should be mountains there, it should be a sea there, it should be that and that and that. There are certain names, connections there. And then, of course, I want to be there at the site. And that's the reason I'm doing so much photography. I document these things because I see a pattern. Pattern recognition is very important in science. And I see a pattern here in, in the finds. You have here a very interesting comparison 